Hey, it's some old guy coding again, and I was thinking about a project that I wanted to make Alexa controllable, and I was trying to figure out how to do that and did some searching around. I came across this, uh, it's called the Wemos, W-E-M-O-S, uh, a D1 Mini module. Uh, from doing a little digging around here, it looks like the D1 Mini is uh, got the equivalent pin out to the V2, so I think it is uh, the V2 uh, uh, version of the board. But in any case, I, I uh, picked up a box of five of them from eBay, and uh, they come complete, uh, each in their own little bags, with uh, a variety of uh, pins and headers that you can solder into your uh, uh, board. And today we're going to go through the configuration and setup of uh, the software on the uh, Arduino uh, IDE to uh, talk to this board and... Uh, get a little code so that we can test it out with uh, the Alexa and make sure that it works okay. We're going to be doing this on a Mac today, so if you're on a Windows machine, uh, it, you have to pick the right uh, Windows driver for that rather than a Mac version. And the driver install might be a little bit different for you, but otherwise the rest of it should be applicable. So to save you from having to watch me uh, do hours and hours of struggle to get this done, we'll do a condensed version here and, and basically uh, summarize the steps and uh, how things went. So when it comes time for me to install uh, Arduino IDE, I just Google Arduino IDE, and uh, where I should probably be clicking that top entry there, I always fail and click the second entry. And then this page just confuses me, so it says previous IDE releases, where I think the one on top there is the um, latest release up at the top of the page. Um, it just confuses me. So the thing to do if you end up on this page is just go up to the top and uh, click Software. And then you can scroll down, and there is download the Arduino IDE, and pick the one for your operating system. Of course, I'm on a Mac today. Um, and if you uh, should donate at least once uh, for this software, because it is a great benefit and uh, doesn't cost you anything. So if, if you can, certainly donate at least once. And uh, once that's downloaded, we will go ahead and install it. And it takes a couple of minutes to install. Um, but after we do get it, installed uh, I like to just uh, right click uh, on options and say keep in dock uh, the executable will be will be in the downloads directory I probably could move it to the um, applications directory but this works fine for me So let's get the dreaded driver install out of the way next. I just search for Wemos D1 driver and pick the one that's at the, the Wemos website. And that should take you right to the download page. Uh, I'm downloading Mac. Your mileage may dif be different with the, with the Windows box. So we just open up the folder and uh, make sure that you have version 1.4, at least 1.4, maybe later at a later date. But uh, this does work with uh, Sierra and High Sierra. And go ahead and just double click it to install. There's also a README file here to uh, help with any problems or issues. And we'll have to take a look at that here in a bit because I've never seen it install correctly in the first time. Just work your way through the prompts here. And at some point, it's going to ask you for your. Uh, uh, um, username password to allow this to be installed and this will take a little bit so the very first time you install the driver uh, you're going to end up with this pop-up here saying that the uh, uh, system extension is blocked so what you need to do at this point is open up uh, the settings there we go system and uh, go ahead and go down to uh, the uh, security and privacy and then you're going to see this message down at the bottom here that uh, the system software from some unknown named company here was blocked uh, but that is correct you have to allow that to uh, um, proceed and then go ahead and click the OK button up here and it will finish up the install however I think it's because of this problem with the uh, thing being blocked, the first time install doesn't work for me. And of course it's then uh, it's time for the uh, reboot after we're all done here. 
It seemed like it took a long time for the computer to reboot after this process. And one more thing, uh, once you do hit the, the reboot button there, it will ask you if you want to move the driver to the trash bin. Uh, I would suggest you don't because we're going to have to go roll through this step most likely at least one more time. At this point in time, plug in the uh, USB cable and the Wemos D1 into the mini USB cable on the other end. Unfortunately, I uh, lost the video that I had uh, taken during the initial reboot process, but I just demonstrate this way. Uh, this is a working system now, but let's take a look at it anyway. And arbitrator of this all, of course, is whether or not the uh, Arduino can see this or not. So we go to Tools, and it really doesn't matter what drive we or board type we have in there. Um, if we look in here and we can't find this uh, WCH USB serial uh, whatever 13720 or something similar um, means it didn't work. So let's go ahead and delete the driver so that we can uh, reinstall it again and in the bottom of the readme PDF file on the driver folder it has some steps to go through. Uh, we have to open terminal uh, if you don't have terminal in your uh, uh, bar down here you can always search under uh, the applications just type terminal you have to set super user mode pseudo super user and enter the password for that and then I'm just going to copy both of these lines here in the text it says well if you can't find one do the other I just do them both so there we go we're going to copy this guy and we'll paste it over here and hit enter and uh, We'll copy the next guy. And we'll paste it over here and hit enter. If uh, you're not in super user mode, that second step will definitely blow a whole lot of errors out. So, um, so there we are. We've uh, uninstalled. Uh, the next step would be to go through a reboot just for safety. So once you've rebooted the system, go ahead and just reinstall the driver just like we did before. And we'll zip right through it here because this is all old stuff. The only difference this time is you will not get a pop-up about needing to, uh, uh, or about the driver being disabled by, by the system. Um, that only happens the first time you try to install. So it seems like maybe the driver installs better the second pass around, not having that interrupt the process. Uh, I don't know if that's the cause or not. It's just, uh, it's just an idea. And of course, you'll have to reboot at the end of the driver install here again. And ta-da, we've made it through the driver install. And the proof of this is if you take a look at the Arduino IDE and the, uh, under tools and uh, the port, we should be able to see that appropriate uh, uh, ID or uh, 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 appropriate serial port there. Um, if you don't see it, uh, certainly retry the uninstall, reinstall. Uh, make sure that you have uh, a real data cable. Don't fight it uh, for a week like I did. Uh, and uh, good luck. We'll continue on in part two of this video. This is getting a little long and pretty uh, tedious having to uninstall and reinstall. So we'll continue on in part two, uh, setting up the drivers and uh, setting up the initial piece of firmware to uh, talk to um, our, the Alexa box. Thanks for watching.